Hello everyone, it's Liz Surya here, your host of the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. Welcome, welcome. I'm super thrilled today because we actually don't only have one guest, but we have two. That's right. So this is a very special episode and I have two amazing duo guests in our show. Uh, they're by the name of David Finman and Peck Medina. Uh, they are co-founders of Viral Ideas, and I first of all I want to say hi, David. Welcome, and Zach, how are you? Thanks so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah. I am so. Thank you for taking the time also. So let me do a brief intro about your company, what you can do for our audience. And uh, David and Zach, they're actually uh, the, from the company Viral Ideas, which created online videos content for clients ranging from small business okay, to Fortune 500 brand. The company mission is to help brands create to inspire, and Viral is a video production company for the social world. And boy, we know we live in a social world, don't we? They work with over 100 companies worldwide, helping them to create and distribute video content on new media. Welcome, welcome, guys. I really, you know, I, I'm honored to have you both of you because first of all, I know the importance of video content. And um, just recently, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, even though this is considered a podcast, uh, I just recently, as of this year, started creating a, a dual format, which was the video and the audio at the same time, because having a split audience between subscribers and YouTube and having my SoundCloud you know, uh, followers, one was not very happy with the other because someone were getting the audio, but then they were getting the static, you know, uh, image that it didn't, it was not, not a fair deal to them. So anyhow, I, I really want to go deep into this because I know both of you are an expert about this video content. And, and my question and what really, you know, the, the main, you know, episode is about is why is video marketing so important for a business? So, uh, who wants to start here, David or Zach? Raise your hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll kick it off. So, 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 video video is important for a lot of reasons, but the, the the most the most important that we see happening right now is internet traffic as a whole is shifting towards video. So, by I believe it's 2019, uh, statistics tell us that over 80 percent of the world's video traffic will be video. So, let me repeat that: 80 percent of the world's video traffic next year will be video. And for companies, that means that your website's quite important, but not only that, but having videos in conjunction with the content that you're putting out is incredibly important. So you know, speaking to your podcast, not just putting out the audio of the podcast, but the video is particularly Absolutely. important to capture that wide audience of, of, of video traffic. And I, I know Zach has a lot to add to this too. Like so go, go for it, Zach. This is your, your opportunity. We, we're gonna take turns here. <laughs> well, well to, to really focus on, on the podcast side though too, what, what I'm seeing, obviously Dave and I are big advocates for podcasts, but you know, there's, there's two different ways that you, can, that you can really experience a podcast, right? So sometimes if I'm in the car, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna listen to the audio portion. But if I'm, oftentimes before I go to bed, I'm listening or watching to a podcast. And it's much more entertaining for me to physically see the human interaction, the personalization of that. And that's what also ranks better on social, social uh, media. So like Facebook prioritizes video over anything else. So it's really great to see, especially in the podcast world, the video content being produced. I'm really excited about that. Right. And you know what, that, that is, that, and I do agree with both of you because like I said, from my perspective, I mean, I, I started my YouTube channel, I don't know, it was back in, I think it was like 2012 or 10. And, uh, you know, that was like the big thing back then. And I'm talking about, you know, a few years now, right? Um, it, yeah, I, I did a few videos, which by the way, they're still there, the original videos. I, I, I tell people, listen, you know, what I do for a living, obviously, as you know, it, it's crunching numbers and, and helping, you know, clients uh, reduce their tax headaches uh, with a lot of planning. But the fact is that what's interesting is that it has grown so much because I think it's the closest thing that you can actually connect face to face and actually see someone's expression and their mimics. And 
I think just that's amazing. That's the closest that you can be without being face to face with someone. So I agree with you. Um, and I, I love podcasting, and that's why I started as last year my channel. And you're right. There's different times that whether you're you're driving, you're doing something that you cannot have your eyes into the the monitor or, or the screen. But you, well, you have, shouldn't have your monitor in the in the stream. You know, <laughs> uh, you know when you're driving in particular, you should be just listening instead of you know. Watching. Let's give some good advice out there for some of the people who are listening to this and watching, right? Yeah, if you're, if you're watching this on the road, switch switch over to <laughs> switch over to the audio version. Thank you, thank you. I said we we we're trying to give it, be good people here and advocate for for safe driving, <laughs> you know. But yeah, so tell me a little bit. How did you both got together, and what is this thing about that I heard that you're like yin and yang? I mean, who, who's the yin, who's the yang here, and what what what's the whole story behind that, and how the company started? With, I guess we all have a purpose behind it, knowing the fact that the video is such a huge marketing, uh, you know, way of exposing, you know, a company. What about you with the founders? Tell me a little bit about both of you, please. Great question. So, so Dave and I actually started our first companies um, separately back in high school. We were juniors in high school. Uh, Dave started an entertainment company. I started also like an entertainment company. He produced um, large scale teen dances and I was doing sweet 16s um, and, and different parties in that sense. And we basically collaborated with one another and that's how we got to know each other. Um, and then eventually Dave started the zombie run. Uh, and, and all through our efforts of, of these early stage companies, we were always producing um, content, right? And primarily video content. And we were just, no matter where we went, um, I know for a fact, I was always the one with a video camera in my hand. Is that right? Um, um, and you know, Dave, Dave eventually grew that, um, in, in sold that in nine months. And we, we really became friends through that whole process, traveling to all these different cities and whatnot. And then eventually we were just sitting in Starbucks one day and we're like, do you want to go out to San Francisco? Um, I was like creating an app at the time. So I wanted to see what it was like out there. Isn't it beautiful? I, oh, I, I really enjoyed my trip to San Francisco. I just, I was there and, and, and excuse me to kind of interrupt, by the way, it's something that I do with all the interviews. I kind of add a little bit of <laughs> story to, to every episode. I think that's what makes me a little bit unique from, from other hosts out there. But you know, the funny part is I was just there exactly now. It's going to be almost two years ago in July of uh, 2016, yeah. So it was, it was amazing, the trip to San Francisco. And I didn't stay only in the city because they have so much other, you know, yeah, cities yeah. around there. Like, you know, you have uh, to see um, the Red Oaks trees, which is amazing, right? And so well, you, you Lito, which is right across around. the bay, right? Did you went there? I'm sure you did, right? That was amazing. Yeah, we that is beautiful. So, story, so everything kind of grew in San Francisco. Is that when your ideas started kind of rolling your mind yeah so so we we went to um a meetup out there and we just started ne networking with some people and one thing led to another we, we started doing um a social media contract and that kind of morphed into what we're doing today which is video dave and i have always just loved video i know for a fact that whenever we look at something it's like why isn't that in video form right and that's just that's how we look at it um but we also we also know the power of it because we used it for ourselves so we're really big advocates on whatever you know, whatever we're selling or whatever we're telling people that, that they should do, we also do it ourselves. Um, so we even do like what's called viral TV here, where we basically have one of our crew members follow us around with a camera cool. and create these little episodes, you know, once, once uh, a month or once a quarter um, to kind of showcase who we are as a company behind the scenes. So it's, it's a lot of the fun. The real person, because people don't really, they forget that, you know, and I, and I say this, I mean, even coming from me, I, what you see is what you get with me, the good and the bad. <laughs> And, and, you know, the reality is that, you know, we should show our true colors because, you know what, yeah. we're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect no matter what we do in life. So what is better than just be natural being yourself with the good and the bad? If someone's going to accept you, they're going to accept you for who you are and what you know. Right. But that's, that's amazing. I like that. So once a month you get like you know, someone just videotaping and going around and that's, a, that's good. I like that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So our, our last episode, we, we, we did a speech over at Speed Raceway. It's this, it's this place you, you can go go-karting. So we did a speech in the back of there. So we, so we actually got some go-karting in to the actual video. And you got to see, you got to see the, the speech as well. So that was, good. That was good. Now, good. Now, now something, something to that point, though, that, that I really want to hit home on, and I know Dave can elaborate on this a little more, is, is the watch time. So the watch time is so important uh, beyond just views. So 
social media, um, it's actually showing that they're moving away from just prioritizing views and really diving in deep of the watch time. How, how long is someone actually watching your video? Um, so what, what we really like for, for um, businesses is the fact that if someone did uh, an FAQ video or a how-to video or just an about us video, they can take that one hour, couple hours they spend doing that and, and really show that to an audience where we, I mean, I don't know how many hours we got on our, on our viral TV, but it's amazing to think that our one episode can then hit so many people uh, and, and just seeing the watch time so that we basically took it from a couple hours to like hundreds of hours uh, of, of watched video content. And, and what's interesting too is, um, you know, oh, excuse me. What is the secret sauce behind that? That's what I need to know. <laughs> so how, how do you tell people who are listening and watching that? How do you get that video viral? Because let's, I mean, you know, let's be upfront. I mean, there's so much competition. Everybody, you know, they, they, a lot of people are talking about the same subject. I know we can always come up with new titles and whatever you want, but how do you make that engaging? That that's going to go viral. That's what we need to know from both of you. Come on. <laughs> all right, so, 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 so we'll give it all away. So, okay. um, so essentially, first you have to define what is viral. So a lot of people think viral, you need 50 million, 100 million, billion views. That's for, for businesses, that's simply not true. So we do it for us. You know, if we can get our tribe, you know, our, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen the article, A Thousand True Fans, but we, oh, we, 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 we really abide by that. It's basically, you know, if you're a business or if you're, you know, a freelancer or even if, even if you're a large business, you want to get a certain number of true fans, people that will buy whatever you do, um, watch whatever you do, share whatever you do. So our goal when we release the video is to share it with our thousand true fans and to have them watch it. Because every time they watch it, they become interested in services that we have. And for different businesses, it's different things. So viral for one of our customers, we work with one of the companies that puts black boxes in trucks. They only want trucking companies and there's what? only a couple thousand of them in the country. So when they release a video, they want every trucking company to see their video. And if that happens, they're happy campers. So really? Okay. Now, let me ask you something, because again, to help out the audience, right? When, when we're dealing with the business, again, going viral can, I, I guess, many things can fall into place and, and factors of how, you know, you can promote a video. Is there a better channel versus to another channel? Uh, because I've been hearing a little bit, and this is where I need to dig in with both of you, you're the experts. Uh, is it Facebook Live the big thing here, and maybe pulling that video afterwards and putting it to YouTube or Vimeo? Compare those Vimeo, Facebook, and, 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 and YouTube a little bit that way, you know, we, we can understand what's the best method if possible. I know it, you cannot go into detail, but at least give us an, a, a brief idea. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a broad stroke overview. So Vimeo is good for housing your videos. It's, it's great for putting them to your website, but it, but it is not, from, from what we've seen, at least for companies, it's not the best discovery tool in the world. So your, mm. people are not going to discover your video for, through, through mail. They're, they they're, they're going to watch it embedded into your website, and it's a great tool for that. Okay. YouTube is great for search. So if you, if you create a video and post it on Facebook, you should also post that same exact video on YouTube, on your YouTube channel. Because when people are searching for things around your topic, you know, it'll come up on YouTube, it'll come up on, on Google because you know, Google owns YouTube. So that's right. you know, they're, they're very much integrated. Absolutely. Facebook is great for quick distribution. So you know, what we're seeing right now with Facebook ads, from anywhere from one cent to three cents, you can get a single view. So it's very, very, very cost effective to get views and exposure and, and sales and you know, all that good stuff from Facebook. Now, as, as far as that goes, though, and one thing I would just add to that is also transcribing your video is so important. Uh, I think 90% of people that are on Facebook actually don't even listen to your video. Uh, so it's so important to actually transcribe it. Is that what, you, what they call caption? Does yes. it have to yes. have the letters uh, uh, on the bottom of the video or something like that? Right. Isn't a video, uh, I'm sorry, and correct me here if I'm wrong, because you, you both are the experts in this and I'm not, but uh, in the, in, it, isn't there an option in YouTube that actually does it for you? I mean, it, is that right? Uh oh. <laughs> there is, there is, but um, check it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, be, be careful with using um, like automated services. Obviously, they're getting better. I mean, yeah, I'm full for you know, seeing that progression of that. I think it's awesome. 
Um, but also we've just found that uh, a human doing it may be a little bit more accurate than others, uh, just for sure. a few different, three different reasons. But and it, and it, even if you use a human, make sure you check it because there's, there's always, a, there's always errors. You want to make sure that that's accurate. And but some it, words, maybe the way you pronounce it might come out and, <laughs> with a different, yeah. <laughs> okay, I got you. Okay. And, and, and I think, I think I've seen that before yet yeah, in some of those videos, but very few, you're right. Very few people on YouTube are doing that. But the ones that I have seen, you're right. I noticed that I think in two occasions where they say a word, but it, it came out something different. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, that's not the right thing. Now, an interesting point, and let me just kind of go reverse here a little bit. You say that people are really going to YouTube and instead of watching it, they're listening to it or just reading it? Why? I'm curious yeah. about. More, more, more so on Facebook. More, yeah. more so on Facebook. Okay, YouTube. Facebook, sorry. Okay. Because a lot of people, a lot of people are, are, are looking at Facebook at work. They're looking uh -oh, at it. Oh, they should not be doing that. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're watching our video, then watch, then watch away. Uh, but um, they're, they're looking at it at work. They're looking at it in places where they don't want to make a noise. So, um, or they're scrolling through a Facebook feed and they want to pause for a brief moment on something that looks interesting. Uh -huh. Maybe 20, 30 seconds. But they don't want to fully commit to watching the video with audio. No, no. That's, that's where, I'm sorry, that's where it comes very handy to have the caption into, into the video, especially. Yeah, that, way, that way they can see ah. what, what it's about before they even, so the, the idea is I'm scrolling through it real quick. I, um, first off, you have to have like a, a compelling thumbnail or an image that really captivates them in the first three seconds, right? Because we have three seconds to draft. So a pretty picture wouldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, of you, I think it would be perfect. <laughs> I don't but, know about us, though. <laughs> <laughs> you what to do um, do I? But my question is, do you see that there's more traction? Uh, because I'm sure you probably do some sort of software analysis of how many clicks and uh, how, how long the person has watched the videos and what platform. Have you seen any trend when it comes to, like you said, an image? Now, do you think there's more traction to a human image or to maybe an avatar? Or, ooh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting there, huh? <laughs> well, so, okay, so I don't want to say any blanket rules because right. to some extent everything works. If you look at YouTube, if you look at YouTube, there'll be thumbnails of avatars with videos of a million views. There'll be thumbnails of people. But you know, in in my personal data collection, you know, just kind of from what I've seen, I see pictures and videos of people working better than things and images. People connect with people very well. We're still so, humans. I tell people you can put a little cartoon there yeah. and a character, but we're still the ones. <laughs> but, but 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 it is changing, and there, and there's always. Okay. You know, everything, everything does work. So I don't, I don't want a blanket statement and say, you know, animation doesn't work and, you know, avatars don't work and, you know, little slides don't work because they do. And we do them for clients all the time and they work great. They, they all work in some capacity. The, the only thing I think that the data does show is hitting your logo in the first three seconds is really not the best thing to do. Because if you think about it, you know, the three seconds is so valuable. I understand that you want to get branding out there and whatever, but we, we, we try to avoid just showing a logo for three seconds and then the person be like, all right, next. Because we're, we're competing with time here. So they have the ability to go and jump to another video in literally a, a half a second, right? So why are they going to sit for three seconds looking at your logo? I know it's a beautiful logo. We spent a lot of money on it, but use that maybe as a, in the bottom right corner or at the end, you know, that, that's really where they're best used. And look at look at the way Netflix does it too. So like when you're binge watching Netflix, um, it'll it'll auto start auto playing the next video, and the first ten seconds, fifteen seconds of that video is like gets you hooked in and like creates some sort of mystery that you want to figure out over the next forty five minutes. And then when you get to the end of that forty five minutes, it does it again, and now you're sitting there for ten hours over a single day binge watching House of Cards. Incredible. It, isn't that amazing? And I have come across this and I, I fully agree with, with both of you in, in this kind of, uh, you know, discussion because we don't have any more that time span of, you know, of, of seeing something before. I remember it was more about, oh, it catch my eye. Yeah, let me read it. And you would spend three minutes, five minutes. <laughs> this is changing. It's like it's somehow we're, we're with such a speed living our lives. Is that true? That it's like, I don't know whether we're just trying to cover too much in our lifespan or we think that because we're rushing through all these things that we're going to be able to 
catch the golden nugget or, or, or find something. I find that very particular, you know, with, with the marketing uh, media, because it's like people are not taking the time. Like you said, if you put a logo, it doesn't really mean much, especially if you don't have a slogan. And, and, and that's, that's a really good point. But I think, I think you're hitting on something even deeper, right? And it's, okay. it's the, the content that you're actually producing. So if there's so much content being produced in this world, you can, look that, you can look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. I look at it as a positive thing, right? Because if we can create content that is better than, than the competition, if you want to call it a competition, um, or is more valuable to your end consumer, then you're going to be fine. But if we're putting out, quote unquote, crappy content, right? Or just something that no one finds valuable, then of course it's going to sink to the bottom. So I think, I think the point that we really have to hone in on is, yes, of course it's great to transcribe your video. Yes, it's great to... Uh, have certain titles, uh, thumbnails, and whatever. But at the end of the day, it's really the content that you're producing. Is it valuable to your end consumer? Mm -hmm. You know, in, in that, 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 that is interesting too, because for me, I feel that, like I said, I've, I've been putting out contact out there in a lot of my clients too. And you're right. It, it's like you have just a, such a short span of catching, you know, people's attention that if you miss that, it's like, it's gone. So do you repost these videos? How often do you repeat a video that you create for an example? Uh -oh. <laughs> Here comes the next big question. <laughs> yeah. so, so, okay, so I'll, I'll give you kind of like the blueprint, you know, and um, we've shared this a few times, but um, I'll give you the blueprint of how we kind of built our business. Yes, yes, like, we want to know, we want to know, come on. I, I, I would give this for a hundred clients, but it's easier to explain, you know, for us, because we, we practice what we preach. So the first 40 clients, we literally got from cold call. So we cold called, we got 40 clients, we made 2,000 phone calls in the first year. So once, once that happened, we started producing content. So we started for ourselves, we built viral TV, we started going on podcasts, we started, you know, any, any opportunity to create a piece of video content, we took. Um, and, you know, it helps that we have a whole in-house video team here that we can, you know, pull and create, you know, various different clips. And... We like to say we, for us, you know, chunking up clips and using it over and over again, we like to say what we, what we do is we, we kind of abuse every single clip and maximize it to its full potential. Okay. So for example, let, let's, let's take, for example, an episode of Viral TV. An episode of Viral TV, it's essentially a vlog. You can check it out. Um, they're on our website, uh, viralidea.com. So if you want to check out an episode, they're up there. Um, so what we'll do with an episode of Viral TV is we'll run the episode, the full episode on Facebook. We'll run the full episode on YouTube. Then from there, we'll chunk it out and we'll create individual 10 second videos for Instagram story that tease the actual video and pull people into a link in the bio to send them to YouTube. Then we'll chunk out individual pieces from that and we'll stick it in Instagram. So 60 second clips from that will end up in Instagram. Then we'll chunk out more clips and we'll stick them on Twitter. And so this, this one piece of content becomes spread out. The entire month. Of, it could become an entire month of content. Wow. Even, even on podcasts too that we're on, a lot of what we do is we'll take out, you know, a one minute chunk, a 30 second chunk and a 10 second chunk of the actual podcast. And if you go on our Twitter, uh, which you can find on our website, um, you can actually see some of the podcasts that we're on where we, where we have a really good soundbite that we pulled and we'll actually pull that individual soundbite and we'll stick that on Twitter. We'll stick that on Instagram and we'll stick that on Facebook. So, and, by, and I'm sorry, by doing that, then people have to come and visit your website. Is that right? And do, do you get their emails at that point? Or what's the next strategy once they look at that clip and they're interested in continuing watching the rest of the episode? So we'll actually capture, if they go to their website, we'll, we'll, we'll use Facebook retargeting. So we'll be able to retarget them. We'll be able to use Facebook ads. Um, you can actually run Facebook ads. Anyone that's watched you know, any, any bit of a video that you've put out, you could actually show them another advertisement. So once people hit our funnel, generally they're constantly seeing our stuff, you know, at least once every other week, you know, and this allows, you know, in our business and in a lot of businesses, people buy when they're ready, but we're always the company that's top of mind because we're able to constantly show them content. So right. from that initial 40 clients that we cold called, you know, we're, we're, our business is three years old. We're now up to 120 different clients, you know, all over the world and, and Congratulations. We, have, we haven't really cold called since then so so it's all been it's all been grown organically through content marketing 
Incredible. And, and you know what's amazing? Also the engagement, right? I mean, that is that something else that you also provide that kind of service or that's someone that has to be responsible within the company that you're promoting that needs to do it in their end? Do you provide that service? Because what about if people making comments on Facebook or they're doing YouTube? I heard that that's extremely crucial, I mean, to engage back with this, you know, audience. Do you provide that service to you or they're actually someone that you train or help out in, in, in within the other company? For, for commenting back, we actually recommend that the company does it because it, it, it should come from you. So, oh. so, so I, I mean, it's, it's, even if it's a hundred comments, those are a hundred people that cared enough to write something. So, you so what, what do you do? I'm sorry. You just put, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should, you should write that. You know, it depends on what they say. You should write something meaningful. If it's just a thank you, if it's just something to write, thank you. You could do like a little emoji. You know, connect with them on emoji Facebook. too. Do like a little emoji. Yeah, be, be fun with it. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to be this stiff company. You can be person. You could be personal. No, I'm not stiff at all. But that's okay. Now, 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 so, something, something to to keep in mind too, which I think is really important with that is. Uh, so watch time obviously is really prioritized, but also Facebook is prioritizing the engagement of conversation. So it used to be just commenting was great. It still is. But what's even better is you'll actually see someone will leave a comment. And then if you hit a reply, it's actually a whole new little conversation. Sure. And what they're doing is they're actually ranking you higher if you start getting conversations built within your uh, your content because it shows that people are actually engaged with it beyond just liking or or you describing. Know, yeah, whatever. So so sharing on, on Facebook is still so important, but also creating those conversations. They really that's that's what Facebook's really founded upon is creating meaningful conversations. So if you can really create meaningful conversations within your content, it will really rank higher. So will you say the important aspect, just to get this clear, um, is if you're in a YouTube platform, for an example, right, uh, definitely um, comments are crucial, right, for, 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 for ranking. Would you, would you agree with that one? Would that yeah, be like so, the first priority so, 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 along with maybe uh, the watch time? So comments are really important and, and watch time is arguably the most important because yeah. They really want to see see you on the platform as long as possible. So a like a like on your video actually doesn't do that much. Whereas if they see that you know your video is thirty minutes, I'm making that up, but and they, and someone watched twenty seven minutes of it, and maybe also then watched other videos of yours, that is so valuable. So that's where they start ranking you higher. Whereas if they land on your video, they watch three seconds of it, and then, then they leave. Sure, you have another view, but it's not a meaningful view. So they don't really rank it that high. Thank you for sharing that with us. I think that is important. But again, how do you, you know, keep the audience watching? Because like most videos right now, they are over 10 minutes. Like when I do my solo episodes, they're usually up to 10, 15 minutes. Uh, when I do with special guests like both of you, I do 30 to 35 minutes. And um, I know that my marketing person has looked into it and it has increased. We were like only two minutes and went up by three minutes. But again, if you compare three minutes versus 15 minutes of a solo episode, that's not really much. So we still in the low ball and oh. low rank of that. So people who are having this kind of issues, again, I think there's a lot of noise out there, too much people, too much content going on online. And unfortunately not all of it, like you said at the beginning, it's good. But how do you pass through all that traffic, I call it, heavy traffic to make it to the top and, and have those people engage? Because I think that there's an important factor, and correct me here if I'm wrong, okay, by all means. People like to follow other people. And when they see a channel that has more subscribers, like I, I've been very lucky in the sense, yes, we've done a lot of promotion, you know, for, for aware, awareness to a channel. And now I think we almost reach a little bit over, I think it was like, I don't know, uh, 1900 subscribers. Yay. So we almost awesome. reached the 2000. Maybe when you guys are going to reach the 2000, there we go. Um, and then like in SoundCloud, we have, what is it like close to 2000 followers, right? So we're happy about seeing it, but the fact is, how do you beat that traffic? Come on, seriously, what, what, what else can you do, especially for people who are not ready financially yet to hire a company like you? Is there any little tips and tricks that you can help us out here and, and see what we can do, please? So, so, so I, would say, I would say that if you're creating videos like this, 
when people are searching, you know, for, for, for example, let's say someone was searching for how to hire a production company. If I provide them a, a video that's five minutes long, giving them tips and tricks on how to, how to hire a production company, that is something that they want to watch. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, you know, need to be overproduced. It doesn't need to be crazy entertaining. It's just an informative piece of content. It's a knowledge base. Gotcha. Now, on the other hand, you have to look at some other sides of things. So um, viral TV is built for entertainment. So our, 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 our vlog, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of pieces of content that we create for our clients are built not so much for the information side of things, but for the enter entertainment side of things. Okay. So when people are looking at content, they want to be informed. They want to be entertained. Uh, what, what are the other ones, Zach? Uh, they want to they, they want to you know, feel some sort of emotion. Right, right. And, and, and we, we really look at it, I mean, as you already said, awareness is we, we break it down into the buyer's journey, which is awareness, consideration, decision. It's the use case of what the video is being used for, right? So if they're literally just typing in, um, you know, how to create a podcast and your video is five minutes long on how to create a podcast, that's so valuable to them. But if they're, okay. if, if they're just becoming, if you just, you know, show them that video on, on Facebook, for example, and they weren't really expecting it, maybe they really weren't that interested they might watch it for three seconds because it's not really there for them. Whereas there's just a different of use cases. If it's the, if it's the awareness stage, it can be a bit more broad, uh, more brand awareness, things like that. Consideration, they're considering what their problems are, you know, making some decisions there. And then ultimately the decision stage is like, just push me over the top, right? And, and give me the most information, provide, provide me with the most value. Um, that, that really I'm looking for, because obviously they're, they're seeking answers to a problem. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing that with us because it does help a lot. And like, and I think you, you gave a little bit earlier a very good tip. And that was the fact that maybe it might be something for, you know, especially for people who are creating videos out there that are not in the professional platform, like all, like both of you who are already doing this for quite a few years. Um, and they just do this, you know, uh, instantly i mean they, they don't edit they don't cut like by the way i, I don't do none of that uh so my mine comes out the way it was meant to be so my, my thing with that is that splitting into like small segments sounds like a good idea i like that because i think it's kind of call i would call it like teasing teasing people so here's a little portion about this video maybe five minutes and then we're going to split it right and do other parts of the video even though it's the same length you know but we split it into like a five ten minute segment H have you been trying to do that or most of your videos what's the length that you do by the way that's important <laughs> so, so length length actually is something it, it depends on the platform so okay. if so, so so that that's platform ad specific and there's like to get into that right now is like it's it's too specific but as a general rule of thumb you you want to you want to make sure what you're doing is convenient for the watcher so you don't want to break stuff up just to break it up. Oh. And you don't want to break a, a video that could be a 20 minute video into four chunks for in four different YouTube videos, just to break it up where if you have four sections of it, right, where, where one section is talking on one thing, one section is talking on another thing, you want to make sure it's just convenient for the end watcher is really what it comes down to. The chunking up happens when you want to watch, you want someone to watch something on Instagram, but they'll only watch something for one minute on Instagram or 10 seconds in an Instagram story. What, 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 I would, what I would probably advise on more instead, you know, of course, you know, that, that's, that's some good ideas there. But if you're putting it on YouTube, utilize timestamps. Uh, the fact that you can actually timestamp and say, you know, at minute 105, we talked about brand awareness videos. At two minutes, we talked about how to create podcasts. So, yeah, and really break it up so that they can click on it and it jumps right to that point. I know for a fact, I don't know about you, but like, I don't. I don't mind if it's a 27 minute video, if it's valuable to me, but I do mind that I know at what point in time things are happening because to me, I'm like, all right, I want to know what I can jump to, where are the most valuable points for me? Um, and I, it makes it so easy. I can just click on it and it jumps right there. So like, that's a good point. yeah, that's definitely, yeah. you know, when I, I never thought about that, I'm sure a lot of people out there are having crossed their mind. Uh, so you're seeing like uh, underneath the video where we have the description, you can actually put, uh, uh, like uh, a breakdown of what are the main, uh, you know, yeah. um, tips maybe or the, the, the main subjects of what we're discussing. That's interesting. Okay, that's definitely, that's going to be very helpful. And, and before, you know, we wrap up this episode, I tell you what, one thing I do need to find out is 
video live, live, live. What is it versus YouTube live to Facebook? Which one's winning here, you know? So let's compare, compare you know, FB with uh, versus YouTube. What's going on there? <laughs> so, so first of all, li live is actually very difficult to tackle. I don't know if you've ever done a Facebook live. No, I have not. Should I? <laughs> I, I mean, so, so, so the point the point is, you know, you're kind of capturing a transient audience in a way, you know. So you're you're capturing an audience that is on Facebook or on YouTube at the time that you're doing your recording, and ultimately you're going to save the recording and it's going to be there and people are going to watch it after the recording. But it's difficult. It's difficult a lot of times for companies to plan out, you know, a one hour live segment or a thirty minute live segment. It's why the TV guys get paid the big bucks. It's very, very, very difficult to perform in a live environment. So. That all said, it, you know, it does, it does, it does work well on, on both Facebook and YouTube. And, you know, we see, you know, with the map on, on Facebook, you can see, you know, where yes. the live events are happening. Same, same with YouTube. And they, they have a whole live section. But, you know, I, I know Zach has a lot of opinions on this, too. It, it, it really it, it goes back to the use case, right? If, is, is it being used for the right reasons? I think, you know, if you were to record this, this episode in, in a live form, you know, it, it could be valuable. Um, but... Just kind of, kind of like Dave said, it's like it's it's hitting the right people at the right time. So like you know, it's, I don't know what time it is where you are, but ten forty in the morning here. I'm not sure how many people necessarily are on Facebook right at this second that can just jump into a live segment and watch it, right? Whereas if you put this out, you have literally unlimited time to to get to garner their attention over the next however many years it's going to house it on your Facebook. So I think that I think. You know, Facebook Live is actually becoming more and more powerful um, each and every day, but it really comes down to the use case at why you're using it and when you're using it. The, the, the other benefit I will say for Live is that interactive. Go, go for it, David. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the interactive environment. So like, let's say you do have a decent audience, you know, and you're going to have 100, 200, 500, a couple thousand people in there. They can ask you questions live and you can actually interact with them. So that feature, you know, over anything else, is incredibly valuable if you do have the audience. If you don't have the audience, you're just going to kind of be like, all right, guys, come on, ask me questions. It's like a waste of time, wouldn't it be? I mean, seriously. I mean, and, and you know what? You brought up another great point. And, and really, uh, you know, I, I'm glad, you know, when I have, you know, expert guests like both of you that you're able to, you're willing to give up so much valuable information because this is things that's taking you, you know, a long time to discover and, and research. Um, you know, I think the point here is, uh, like you said, time in the day of the week. Because why are we going to go live if maybe five people are going to watch it? Again, I think I always been a firm believer of you know quality versus quantity, and you know, and I say that to people because you know while I might have two thousand over subscribers in YouTube, what I'm really, really you know aiming for is not that I have that high number, which is still considered very low compared to what other people who have like. 40, 50,000 or million, you know, subscribers. Um, but for me, that's a lot because, you know, technically it has been increasing a lot, especially since the beginning of this year. But the point is, if you are going to put the time, make sure that you're going to have the audience there, right? So uh, I'm sure there's other little tactics behind there, notifying them through email and things like that. But, you know, time, the day of the week, you have to kind of realize what's going to be convenient for your subscribers. Yeah. And, Not for and, you. And, I'm curious on your end, you know, in building that audience for, for you, what has that done for your business? So, so like as, as you've built that video subscriber base, as you've built that podcast, base. you know what, I'm going to be very upfront because I always been, you know, a, a very sincere about it. And I, and I, you know, I pretty much, um, you know, uh, preach what I practice. And, and the thing is that I really would tell you right now that it's just brought awareness to my company. That's as far as what is done. I, at least now remember I'm in a very traditional industry, you know, accounting and, and taxation. Uh, so a few people I, I would do to say like myself who has kind of, you know, think out of the box and, and spread them their words and their, you know, advisory service to the public, you know, a, a great content that obviously we get paid top dollars for, but it has brought a lot of awareness, but at this point, I'm not going to lie to say that have I converted, which is very, very important. No, I have not. So I'm obviously, I know that I'm still missing a lot of things out of this. <laughs> so I, I know that there's a lot of, 
I think there's a lot of uh, like dots that you have to connect to make this market, you know, marketing uh, video uh, uh, a sensation. And th there's there's a this um, I call it um, uh, there has to be a, a masterpiece. Uh, other things, there are components to make it successful. And just putting out a video, it's not enough. It's not no. enough. So thank you. I, <laughs> we love, get that so much. So, so I'm, I'm glad you actually said that because because really really your next step is working on. Um, your mid and bottom funnel. Yeah. So, so, so you probably you have all these people that are that are watching. You know, I'm not saying you're doing this for sales. You're obviously doing this to provide value for people. You're doing this for, for very well intending reasons. Yeah. But some of the people within your audience might want to use your services. And you know, for people for people out there putting out content, you don't want to neglect the mid and bottom of the funnel. You know, it, it's one. You know, giving value is is just one part of the one step of the funnel. And when people do see value in what you're doing, you know, your solution. Hopefully is the is is the best in the world, and they should they should work with you um, versus someone else. So you know, using that mid and bottom of the funnel to your advantage, and and, and retargeting and kind of working people through that, so they understand more about how they can work with you, not just that you exist, is kind of where the real magic of everything happens. And it's true because they watch a video in there or they listen to about what's the next step. So I think we do it in, in below the common, whatever is the section that we have for, for you know, for, for the content. I think we put a website and if you want to reach us, you know, because you know what, I, I never, I, I always believe that you don't push people to make decisions. They will make them when they're ready. Right. And, and again, it's about building relationship. And I think we're kind of going back to the principle. And I love that part. I really want to share that with, with both of you because, and the, and the whole audience, because I think we see technology uh, and, 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 and the internet, like something so massive that you can reach so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, which is true. It is true. But it doesn't matter how many people you can reach, it's the connections that you can actually create that is going to really make them, you know, realize that you're the right person to come when they need, you know, that kind of service, right? And, and again, you, you brought up a good point, putting out contact and, and not expecting, um, I always believe in, I'm sure you heard um, Gary V, right? And, and, and a lot of people, we, we, we really like him. Personally, I like him, and I'm not here to promote him because I don't get no affiliation uh, or any commissions on this. But I like him, like Tony Robinson, too, because they're, they're people who go out there, they put out content, too. And then um, I've seen a little bit of fuzzy, you know, bad reviews when they come back and say, well, they're trying to sell a book. Uh, please, people, I mean, you know, everybody, we're trying to make a living. <laughs> I mean, we, we give out all this great content, and then when we sell you a book or we sell you a service, then you're going to get upset. <laughs> I mean, you know, so I think we need to be reasonable of what our expectations are uh, when we get in all this free content, right? Uh, because they're coming to one place, like you said, they're searching, whether it's in Google or YouTube, and they say, oh, I want to learn how to do a podcast. And you're getting all these free videos or, you know, episodes and you're listening, you're learning. And then, you know what, it gets to a point that you realize that you really need help. You need that person to help you through the process and, and just kind of take your hand and guide you through because it's going to be way easier Don't we know that. So, you know, folks, I really appreciate so much that you're giving so much good tips, you know, throughout the process. So um, definitely how can the audience reach you? Um, your again, your website, your contact information, and anything else that I, I, are you doing any um, you know evaluations or things that you do for new clients and any kind of promotions? Please share with us. Sure. Um, so our main mission in the world is to create to inspire. Uh, we're working to simplify the create video process for companies. So so working with us, we try to we try to make it simple and easy on the client to do that. Um, you know, if you have any um, interest in video, we 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 both do. Con the consulting of the actual video, then we also create videos and distribute them on on, on um, all new media. So if, if anyone's interested in any of that or just wants to drop us a line and say, hey, and, you know, see how we might be able to help, um, you know, our email is uh, info at viralideamarketing.com, website's viralideamarketing.com, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you. Thank you once again. And it's been really exciting to have both of you and then bringing so much the yin and yang into the whole thing. <laughs> so thank you. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, wrap up this episode at this point. And once again, uh, David and Zach, thank you so much for being with us and part of the episode. And uh, 
and like you said, maybe we should be doing different kind of episodes and bringing up maybe a video about what's going on with Instagram and what's going on with YouTube. And uh, so that's something that we can think to help out the audience. I think that would be very interesting and maybe we can do a 10 minute video. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you, my audience. Again, remember to like, share and comment. And yes, continue subscribing because I love seeing that number going up. But Please engage, which is the most important thing. And we will see you until next episode. Thank you, thank you, and goodbye until next time.